Hey guys, it's time to Nefis and Chill. Hopefully you are staying safe and healthy wherever you may be. In this build video, I'll be going over the Greymore iteration of the Guardian Warden PvE tank we created last patch during Storm. Unlike the Sorcerer tank build update, there aren't too many things that we've changed except maybe a couple traits and weapon. If you guys have been enjoying my tank builds and want to be kept up to date on them every patch, definitely subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate you guys doing so. And don't forget to check out the updates to the Necromancer, Dragon Knight, Nightblade, Sorcerer, and Werewolf tank builds for this patch. We'll be updating our Templar tank build next, and we'll also be releasing a Vampire tank build. Perhaps expect to see a different video for men for the last two, as I want to try out something with you guys. The Greymore update to the Guardian tank build brings the same things that offered in the Hero Storm patch. 1. The ability to tank all four main content, including Dragon Star Arena and Black Rose Prison. 2. Group healing. 3. Group utility. And of course, high survivability. While you can tank on any race with this build, I recommend Nord, Argonian, Imperial, and Breton. In the Hero Storm video, I showcased it using Imperial, and in this Greymore iteration, I will still showcase it using an Imperial as it shows the maximum potential of the build. Now before we move on to the item sets, alternatives, skills, passives, and CP allocations for this build, we're going to go over the race, stats, food, and Mundus. Now why Imperial? Now Imperial actually does of course have the max stam bonus and max health bonus. And that, this max health bonus is actually much more than Nord. So Imperial as a race does net the highest amount of health out of all races. In terms of red diamond passive, the cost reduction of our abilities by 3% is pretty nice for sustain in the long term. When you deal direct damage, you also heal yourself for 411 and restore 333 magic and stamina, and this occurs once every 5 seconds. While this may not seem like much, it can definitely help in a lot of pug runs and long fights, or in fights where your DPS may be lacking, and you just kind of have to hold in there for a little bit longer. This is something I've noticed uh, in different sustain in, in the difference in sustain between Nord and Imperial. It's not too much of a disparity, but it, for me personally, it is noticeable, noticeable. And for the Warden, which doesn't have innate skills where you can get, you know, like stamina back, like as a Dragon Knight, or even some sort of uh, other alternative form of resource, like Ultimate, like Necromancer, it's kinda, it's kinda nice to have this Red Diamond passive for sure. And the 3% cost reduction of our abilities does stack with other things, such as cost reduction lifts, which we'll talk about later, and also it does reduce the cost of our ultimates as a, as a nice bonus. In terms of the health, we do have 64 points into health. Health is going to be a major focus here, just like with the uh, Corruption Necromancer tank build, where our healing is actually scaled off of our max health. And this is pretty important because a lot of the healing in this game uh, on a lot of classes are scaled off of max magicka, spell damage, spell critical, and so forth. But the Warden tank's healing will actually scale off of health and how much health you have. And unlike the Dragon Knight, it does not scale off of how much health you're missing. This is a pretty important thing to note. Uh, your CP allocation will definitely, or not CP allocation, your attribute allocation will definitely vary depending on the race. Uh, some races, like Breton, you can definitely invest uh, a bit more into stamina and also a lot into health. For Argonian, probably everything into health. Nord, you can probably get away with um, depending on your setup or builds or item sets, you can definitely get away with putting more towards stamina or magicka. It really depends on how you set up your races, but that's pretty much it. 64 points health, very simple, no, 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 no strings attached. That's it. Uh, maximum magic is going to be 17,800. And our maximum health is going to be 44.7k. That's a lot of health. And this health is pretty much a safety net for pretty much all the four main content you'll be doing on this build. Uh, maximum stamina is going to be almost 19,000. Magic recovery is going to sit at a base recovery of 1,400. Health and stamina, whatever. And the 1,400 magic recovery will be boosted by like a tripod or tri potion or something which gives health stamina magicka but also gives us major fortitude uh major intellect and major endurance which boosts our recovery as noted on the tooltip and we get to over 1600 magic recovery 
and we can boost this in other ways if we'd like. Um, in terms of the Mundus, we do have the Atronach. If we had the Lord, our magic recovery would be like a bit lower, 200, 300 low, uh, recovery lower, which is a bit uncomfortable on this build and for most tanks because a lot of your skills, I mean, you're using both stamina and magic ability costing skills, but for this in particular, you're going to definitely have at least four magic ability skills or five actually. So it's pretty important to maintain a certain level of recovery for this build. Uh, in terms of the food, Bewitch Sugar Skulls is still the best tri-stat food to use. Otherwise, you can use something like your normal tri-stat food. Um, that is just purple. So like uh, these, you, don't, you, don't, you obviously don't have to use a crown store food, but you can use something like these as well. I would not recommend going buy stat food. A lot of people have been asking me about buy stat food. What about more health? What about more uh, stamina or something? I would not because your magic pool or your stamina pool is still really important in maintaining your resources. Um, stamina is determined how much you can block, how often you can roll down just in case, and if you mess up, how often you have to break free. Maximum Magicka is going to be pretty much keeping up the utility, the healing, and it will help you survive so that you don't have to consume all of your stamina or, worst case scenario, all of your health. And that's why uh, we went with this entire setup over here with the Imperial. More health, decent resources, and that's pretty much it. Resistances wise, it seems pretty low, but that's unbuffed. On the Sword and Board bar, we do have almost 25,000 physical and slightly over 25,000 spell resistance. You can boost this with you know, something like Nord, or you can you know, spec into CP with uh, heavy armor focus or something. That's up to you. For the item sets, now, the last iteration of the Guardian tank build actually had Troll King. Since then, for the Green War patch, Troll King was nerfed heavily. And by heavily, I mean by at least 600 health recovery. And it was a very, very significant uh, technically healing done with the 1500-ish health recovery on both yourself and the group. While it's not going to kill the set, it definitely killed the appeal of the set to this build. But surprisingly, uh, Earth Gore, after much testing, is actually really good. Uh, although it was quote-unquote nerfed as well for Greymore, it actually was buffed in a way because not only are you getting such a large amount of healing done over 10 seconds, but you're also getting this now much more frequently. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds compared to the previous every 38 or so seconds, and that's pretty significant. So this will actually proc once every 20 seconds, and will last for 10 seconds, and basically the cooldown for that is ten, after another 10 seconds, it's going to proc again. And not only does this still provide a large amount of healing for just one target, oh, that is a downside, that it only heals the lowest health friendly target, which tends to be either you or someone else that's getting the beating, if you haven't taunted things, but it also removes all previous enemy placed effects, which can be really nice for a lot of fights where there's a lot of AoEs, snare AoEs, dot AoEs, so that's pretty nice. Keep in mind though, it doesn't um, continuously remove all previous enemy, or continuously remove all enemy AoE dots or something like that. It just removes the prior effects that were there before it propped. So it's, it's not saying, a lot of people are confused by the tool too. It's not saying, okay, it's going to continuously make sure uh, it's going to get, uh, the area is going to be completely AoE free. But it's just going to remove the AoEs that were there before. And that is going to be our primary uh, monster side to go to. Uh, there are other alternatives such as Chokedorn. Chokedorn can be a pretty non-DLC based monster set, uh, a pretty good one to use. It does offer a great amount of healing. It's arguably definitely, I mean, it's mathematically a lot more burst healing than Earth Wars. 30,000 healing over six seconds, and it does have a pretty short cooldown. So this is something you can consider. Earth Gore for me is pretty nice because it's just, I don't know, it's just so much healing, and now it's on a less uh, frequent uh, cooldown, or because it's an AoE, and Choke Thorn is kind of single target. So when you use a heal ability, you have a 15% chance to summon a Strangler Sapling that heals you or an ally. So it's not guaranteed that will hit you or someone you want. 
Uh, it does have smart healing. It tends to target the person that, you know, is the lowest at the moment, but at the same time, it won't switch targets. So let's say person A is at 5k health. Choke Thornton Prox targets person A. But then in the next moment, person B is at 4 or 5k health, down from, I don't know, 15k health or something as a DPS. Choke Thornton won't t switch targets. It has to wait another uh, 4 seconds at least to proc again to heal that person. By that time, they could be dead. Earthcore, however, as long as people are in the AoE or in, in the vicinity of the AoE, uh, let's say person A goes down to 4k. They get healed back up by Earthcore. Person B, uh, right after person A goes down to 4k health or 5k health, person B goes down to 5k health as well. After person A gets to, I don't know, 7k, 8k health, the Earthcore ticks will then proc on the lowest health target, which is person B. And that's why I personally like Earthcore more than Chokedorn after some testing. Otherwise, all their alternative sets include Engine Guardian, Lord Warden Dusk, Sentinel, which actually is a pretty decent uh, utility set for sure in terms of sustain and healing for forming content. Although this has the uh, added uh, con of people need to actually be aware of the spider and stand near it or in it. Um, Stonekeeper is still okay. It's not as much resources gained as pre Grimor, but it's still an alternative you can consider if you're lacking the sustain. Swarm Mother, as always, uh, for non Dragon Knight classes, is still a very good option. Symphony of Blades. Symphony of Blades is also a great way of providing utility. Uh, we did use this for our Infinity Dragon Knight tank build, where we offer sustain to the group. And it was also buffed because now it offers sustain to everybody off of cooldown instead of just one person at a time. Tremor Scale is something to consider, but it's kind of like a niche set for stamina DPS group compositions, whether it's 4 main or 12 main content. Um, but yeah, the traits and enchantments you will have on the Earth Door will be health enchants, and the sturdy traits will be of great help here, because again, you don't really have an innate way to gain stamina back while blocking except through the Netch, which isn't a huge amount compared to the Helping Hands passive Dragon Knight class. Furthermore, uh, the item weight is going to be medium head and light shoulder, and this will play into the Undaunted passive metal, where you get 2% extra stats per type of armor equipped. So we do have five pieces of heavy, one medium, one light, and that's going to give us a total of 6% max stat boost, which is going to contribute to our higher health pool, our higher magicka pool, and our higher stamina pool. So pretty important to go 5-1-1 on this build, five heavy, one medium, one light. And for the rest of the traits and enchantments, it's going to be the exact same thing, all sturdy. And pretty much all health enchantments, just to boost that health attribute. For the primary 5 piece set, it's going to be Ebon. Now Ebon's going to give us quite a lot of uh, health, but also pretty important to note that not only does it increase health for you, but it also increases health for everybody else in your group. For uh, your dungeons, your DLC armors, whatever, it's really, really nice to have the extra 1000 health. Uh, don't let that 1,000 health fool you. A lot of people at face value just say, oh, that seems pretty weak, just 1,000 health. But you have to understand for DPS, going in this patch with Dracian Stranglers taking more damage, or uh, if they're stamina DPS with 2 to 3k health, that's lower than um, Magicka DPS. It's it, The 1,000 health is really, really important. Even for Trials, it's really, really important for a lot of progression groups to use. So don't underestimate this so just because of the tooltip. That 1,000 health can definitely save lives. Now, it also does have the added effect of giving us more health, so that's pretty nice. Uh, the alternative 5 piece that you could use for this is, well, like Yonokrin, um, any set that can give you health. I mean, a lot of people don't like Plague Doctor because uh, they view it as a crutch set, uh, which in a sense it is, but if you want to push the health boundaries, yeah, I mean, Plague Doctor is a decent choice. Uh, Dragon Guard as well is also a decent choice, um, Battalion Defender and so forth, and you can all definitely look up other sets if you like to see what could offer more health. But other than that, Evan is still the go-to 5P set, and this was here for the Hero Storm iteration of the Guardian build as well. For the secondary 5P set, we're going to have Hollow Fang. Now, there is going to be something different here. Uh, last iteration, we had Hollow Fang on both bars. This iteration, we're going to have Hollow Fang on just one bar, and I'll explain why here. For the traits, we're going to have one infused, two trying. And the enchantments will be the new Prismatic Cost enchantment that you can find with the runes from the excavations. 
um, doing the antiquity system in the Elder Scrolls Online as of Greymore. You can get this rune pretty easily. Uh, people are also selling it. And you can make this uh, reduced prismatic cost enchant. And it's actually pretty strong. I'm going to be making a video on this later. So instead of doing stamina cost reduction enchantment and the magic cost enchantment, you can just put this on one infused traded uh, jewelry piece. And you'll still get pretty much roughly the same cost reduction for the price of just one enchantment. This is pretty nice to have because again, as a tank in general, not even a warden tank, we're using both uh, stamina cost abilities and magic cost abilities and this is going to help our sustain quite a bit. For the Hollow Fang rings we do have Triune. Uh, Triune, if you if you feel like you need more infused traded jewelry or even healthy traded jewelry if you want to push that health go for it. Triune is just kind of basically there because uh, it does add a bit more to our max stats besides health because this is to compensate for the lack of you know infused prismatic enchantments on, on the body which offer um, which offer both, well not all, not both, all three uh, stats, as you can see here, max magicka, max health, max stamina. And that's pretty much what we're going to have on the jewelry. Now the, on the sword and board bar, we're going to have hollow thing. Uh, one hander is going to be powered, and the enchantment can be whatever, you can even have uh, poisons if you like, you, you still are able to uh, get the benefit of using powered, the power trait even if you use poisons that are a benefit to you. So that's up to you. But I'll explain why we're going to be using power on this one hander. The Hollow Fang Shield, we're going to have Sturdy, and this is again just to help the block cost reduction. And it's going to have a max health enchant as well. Now, why Hollow Fang? Uh, this patch actually, there's actually an alternative, which I'll get into here in a bit. But why Hollow Fang? It's basically of great utility. Um, whenever you critically heal or critically damage a target, spawn a ball of hemoglobin at their location. After 2 seconds, the ball explodes, restoring 3000 magicka and applying minor vitality to you and your allies within 6 meters of the ball for 9 seconds, which increases our healing received by 8%. And this occurs once every 9 seconds. So that minor vitality of time is gonna be up pretty much on cooldown. I mean, uh, some people on the previous build dot and well it's not gonna proc that often but it procs pretty often on cooldown uh you don't have to have a very high spell crit for it as you can see and obviously crit damage is also part of the tooltip and you, you're thinking to yourself well when do tanks crit damage well everybody actually uh crits just on a less frequent uh scale for tanks and healers uh for for the most part and critical damage is very very achievable in the tank even if you again your spell crit weapon crit is low you'll still crit hollow thing uh, and and part of this is actually why nightblade tanks were so popular uh back in the elsewhere patch and still are now because their minor savagery passive procs off of crit damage so that's why people brought nightblade tanks for uh you know 12 man content or even four man content because they offered minor savagery through you know, having crit or doing crit damage, even though they didn't have a, a high weapon crit or what a spell crit to prop that passive. Although the uptimes on that passive were still really, really high, uh, almost 100%. So Hollow Fang is still a really, really decent set to use. And we had this in the Heroes from Iteration. Not only does it give us sustain through 3000 magic back roughly every 12 seconds, it also gives us minor vitality, which will boost our healing done on ourselves and to the group. The last item set I'm going to be talking about is two-piece. This has replaced the Hollow Fang uh, staff on the back bar as a lightning staff of willpower, and it just gives us more max magic to deal with. This was buffed a few patches ago. The willpower, endurance, and agility uh, item sets were buffed in terms of giving us more spell damage, weapon damage, health, and so forth. And it's giving us 1752 max magic at gold. And we're going to have infused with the Crusher enchantment. And the Crusher Health Enchantment is actually going to be uh, pretty critical as a standard uh, debuff, armor debuff here. Reduces the target's physical and spell resistance by 1622. Just so you guys can see the difference uh, with the Infused trait, it's going to be 2108 armor debuff. And this is going to be pretty critical to keep up on a boss in all forming content, whether it's Dragon Star Arena or Moongrey Fane and so forth. And the Lightning Staff of Willpower is going to give us an extra max magic boost. So right now, here on the Sword and Board Bar, 
and on the back bar it's twenty thousand. So why why more max magic on the back bar? Because we do have more magic abilities on the back bar than our front bar, or roughly the same actually. Actually, the exactly exactly the same. I'm sorry, but the higher cost abilities are on the back bar and uh, higher frequent use. Also, inner rage is a range taunt, so this is something you need to. You may need to keep up on some fights if you can't leash them in. And speaking on that note, that's pretty much it on the item sets. For the item alternatives, we went over the monster sets and potential uh, five-piece alternatives. Uh, now, the secondary five-piece alternative you can look at is Winter's Respite. Magic Recovery, Max Magicka, Max Magicka. Casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground will leave a circle of healing frost for 10 seconds. This is up every... 10 seconds. You and your allies restore 2,120 health every one second while inside the circle. So what you could do here is jewelry on, with Return's Respite and a staff on the back bar. Because again, that's an area of effect on the ground, like wall. And that'll proc it. So it's a pretty interesting set. And it definitely offers a lot of healing. Just, I'm still going to go with Hollow Thing because of that minor vitality plus the sustain. Um... It's just, I don't know. I think it's better to live in Winter's Despite, although Winter's Despite probably offers a bit more raw healing output. So that's really up to you if you want to replace Hollow Fang with, with Winter's Despite. That option is now there as of Greymore. So it's a pretty interesting slot. In terms of skills, we're going to have Gripping Shards. Um, this is actually a flex spot. So this can be replaced with things like Shimmering Shield, uh, Frozen, Frozen Device, at 40 Pull. So... But Gripping Shards is like your kind of bread and butter CC slash um, AOE crowd control. Uh, enemies hit are overcome with Bitter Cold, reducing their movement speed by 30%. And the damage done is actually, it's funnily enough, based on our max health. So we do have a lot of higher health, so we can do a decent amount of AOE damage on this tank. Uh, we also do immobilize ads or elite trash ads or whatever in dungeons for three seconds so, and that gives us a lot of breathing room as tanks to just basically taunt everything in this area as they come towards the group so that no one dies to the, any of the ads the flex slot is of course like i said not every boss fight is going to have ads so you could do like shimmering shield if the boss has projectiles it gives us major heroism at, per projectile and magic it back as well which is really insane it's a really insane skill this is a skill that People are, are, have used in places like Cloud Rest Hardman as a warden thing. So you can also have budding seeds to keep up more healing. You can do a lot of neat stuff here. Um, even like shocks for the AoE Measure Fracture or a AoE Major Breach. It's, it's pretty uh, fun skill. For the second skill in the front bar, we have Pierce Armor. And why we, we have Pierce Armor is actually going to correlate to the Ice Fortress, which gives us minor protection, reducing our damage taken by 8% for 24 seconds. The other more for Pierce Armor is Ransack, which gives us minor protection, but only Major Fracture. Pierce Armor here is going to give us Major Fracture and Major Breach, so uh, if there's no other source of Major Breach in the group, in the Pug group, for instance, in Dungeons, they're still getting uh, our Major Fracture and Major Breach, if they're mag or Major Breach if they're Magic DPS and there's no Elemental Drain or something. Polar Wind. Polar Wind is our main heal. Um, and Polar Wind actually also scales off of our max health. So the more health we have, uh, the more healing we do. And this affects other members of your team as well. Envelop yourself in Winter Winds, instantly healing for 15.8k health and an additional uh, 1,800 health every one second over five seconds. The winds also sweep out in search of an ally within 12 meters, healing them for 15,873 health burst. That's burst. While the effect persists, the winds pulse outwards, dealing frost damage. And the healing, we don't really look at the damage part, but the healing is pretty insane. Um, for the Heroic Slash, uh, Heroic Slash is going to be, again, pretty mandatory for almost every fight in the game, whether you're doing trials or Format, but particularly for trials, there's a lot of boss fights where tanks I've seen don't apply minor maim, and that can lead to a lot of problems, especially when the bosses in question turn around and uh, target 
players randomly or their special mechanics or abilities are not tauntable. So Hero Heroic Slash is very, very good for mitigating damage. And it's also going to give us minor heroism, granting one ultimate every one and a half second for 12 seconds, which is going to contribute um, to our ultimate usage. And of course, our ultimate usage is also affected by that slight cost reduction, which can be noticeable in tight situations uh, from Imperial passive. The Fetcher Infection, this is a major, major utility skill to use as a Warden tank. Fetcher Infection deals damage onto the target, but also gives us minor vulnerability on the target, increasing their damage taken by 8%. You can ask any in-game player or whatever, but minor vulnerability is a must. It's such a huge, significant damage boost on boss fights. <laughs> it's just insane. And the 8% damage taken uh, status effect on bosses is going to help your group clear content faster, more safely, and more consistently. So why 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 the magic morph instead of stamina morph? Some people ask. Well, again, we do need to consider stamina as a more precious resource. If you run out of stamina, you can't block, you can't roll dodge, you can't break free. Uh, some, you can't taunt if you ha don't have access to inner, inner Rage, which we'll get to here in a bit. So that's why we went with the Magicka Morph. And again, we do have the Magicka Recovery to compensate for all this active uh, Magicka magic cost abilities. The ultimate on the front part can be Northern Storm. Um, that's a major protection morph or skill that you can use. Gives us more Magicka as well by 15%, which is pretty insane for 30 seconds. And depending on whether you're going to get access to, you know, major heroism or not, you could potentially uh, cut it close with that. We're keeping it up almost like maybe like 70-80% of the time, depending on the fight. Uh, otherwise, you do have the option of going Reviving Barrier. And with the Magicka 8 passive, you get a 10% additional magic recovery, which we can see here has had a 100 recovery bonus effect on our 1400 recovery pool which again goes up to over 1700. So that's certainly an option here. Uh, other things you can do is definitely Grove, um, which gives us ultimate back as well. We generate 20 ultimate, the initial heals used on a friendly target under 50% health. And it's a very clutch, very low cost heal ability. I mean, that's pretty insane as well. For the back bar, we're gonna have Sanguine Altar. And Altar is gonna give us, well, afflict uh, minor lifesteal on enemies in the area in a 28 meter radius area. So from here to all the way over here, sh that's going to give us minor lifesteal on targets. And your DPS will technically be healed by you. So let's say you set your altar down and you swap to your front bar. This is going to help you continuously proc Hollow Fang. And it's also going to count towards your healing done on the group. So it's a very, very important skill to have. Not only that, it also helps keep up maturation passive. When you activate a heal on yourself or an ally, you grant the target minor toughness, increasing their max health by 10% for 20 seconds. So for those of you wondering why my max health suddenly jumped from 44k to 48k, that's why. Uh, minor toughness is a significant, significant buff to bring to any group for sure, whether it's trying to no death the, uh, a dungeon hard moon or no death the trial, it's very, very significant. The second skill on the back bar is going to be Inner Rage, and this can be replaced with Silver Leash or something on the back bar. Uh, I've been finding more and more situations where I would rather just Silver Leash than Inner Rage, because the melee ads will come up to you anyway, so you don't really need to pull them in. It's more about, especially as a stamina uh, cost ability, it's pretty expensive, right? It's more about choosing which ones to pull in, so the ranged ads will take priority. There are some ads that are arranged in some dungeons that can't be pulled in, or during boss fights that can't be pulled in, which means you just have to swap back to inner range anyway, to stack them with line of sight, or stack them with uh, distance, either one, but definitely Silver Leash is a major consideration for dungeons as a Warden tank. You don't really have any way to pull in ads except the Frozen Device morph. But this can be a bit clunky and a bit slow at times, so that's really up to you. This is, I find them a better use for like pre, uh, like if you know where things are going to spawn, uh, pre-preparation pulls basically. But Silver Leash can definitely be more reliable in much more fast-paced situations. The third skill we kind of referred to earlier was Blockade of Storms, and this is going to help us keep up 
off balance slash uh, the Crusher enchantment. Ice Fortress, we touched on this when we were talking about Pierce Armor. We are going to get minor protection, but at the same time, it also gives other people in your group major resolve, increasing their physical and spell resistance by 5,280 for 24 seconds. Not every DPS uh, trying to push their DPS has a source of major resolve or, or armor, whatever they want to call it now. So this is going to help add to the survivability of the group and yourself, in addition to granting minor toughness and, of course, minor vitality so it's a very very strong uh, utility setup so far bull niche now the bull niche is a preference you can do the magic morph or the stamina morph whichever gives you whichever you need uh, most warden tanks do bull niche uh, i've i've found after some testing i i can do either one it will depend on your stats and how comfortable you are for the content but i feel like for most content if you're new to it as a warden tank Bull Niche is a bit more forgiving because while you do have Bull Niche um, active, you can actually bl hold block and you'll still get the stand back. And typically you don't get stamina back while you're blocking. The stamina recovery goes down to zero while you hold block. So the Bull Niche is actually pretty useful here in maintaining your stand while you're blocking if you need to block more. So that's, that's really, really handy. Every five seconds, also the Nesh removes one negative effect from me, which can be a lifesaver, especially for fights like Cradle of Shadows, Last Boss, Velodreth. And Aggressive Horn is going to be our go-to ultimate to use unless we're in an emergency, like and we need to use Northern Storm and Enchanted Forest. Aggressive Horn is going to be our go-to ultimate to use. Gives uh, the group major force, increasing their crit damage by 15%, and also gives the rest of the group and ourselves max magic and max stamina by 10% for 30 seconds. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the skill setup. Now for the CP allocations, we do have 81 Ironclad, 56 Hardy, 56 Ellie, 66 Dick and 11 Quick Recover or 11 Heavy Armor Focus, and this can be used for pretty much everything. Uh, 51 Warlord, 3 Sprinter, 16 Bashing Focus, gonna help her sustain a bit. 64 Arcanist, 19 Tenacity, that 5% base additional um, sustain back on Heavy Attacking on our Sword and Board Bar can be pretty nice on the Warden. 51 Tumbling and 66 Shadow Ward, you can actually lower the Shadow Ward and uh, probably put more into Tenacity or elsewhere if you need them. Because we do have all sturdy pieces. We have eight sturdy pieces when we're blocking. So we can actually probably uh, decrease the 66 shadow where we have here. Uh, sorry, excuse me. To like 16% or 40 shadow ward. So that's that's up to you. For the blue CP, we have 76 blessed, 61 elfborn, 11 at LE expert, 2 spell erosion. You can do 28 into master at arms and 2 into physical weapon expert for. Uh, repost, it's just kind of free damage. Otherwise, you can inspect more heavily into healing and healing done. We also have 56 Domiturge and Precise Strikes. Domiturge affects wall and so forth. Precise Strikes, we didn't really talk about this, but Precise Strikes does affect stand based healing like Echoing Vigor if you need to heal the group or Resolving Vigor if you need to be if you need to have more healing for yourself basically as a tank. In combination with Polar Wind, Hollow Fang, Vigor, and of course Earth Gore you're pretty much going to be doing a shit ton of healing. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the Guardian tank build update for Greymore. Hopefully you guys will enjoy using this build as you did for Hero Storm. If you feel like you don't want to, uh, you know, farm well power lighting and stuff or whatever, that's fine. The last patch will still work, and that's pretty much it. As always, I really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe and have fun.